We're addressing an American audience here. I am following in details this change in the American public opinion. A protest outside the birthright Israel office led to several arrests today. They began to understand more and more the realities and the facts and uh, the just cause of the Palestinian people. There's no such thing as the Palestinian people. They were made up in the 60s by the KGB and Yasser Arafat. Zionism, they've hijacked the name Israel, the Star of David, they're using this. They are spoiling Zionism. Members of Congress, I have the high privilege and distinct honor of presenting to you the Prime Minister of Israel, His Excellency, Benjamin Netanyahu. He's the most extraordinary politician I've ever seen. He's the great Houdini of politics. How's the hell keeps the silent? Tell them about this one. Which, uh, what is freedom? What is freedom? It's hard to find something that you don't have. Walled Off is an important documentary that shows in painstaking detail the brutality of Israel's fascist regime in the West Bank and the long history of denying basic human rights to the Palestinian people. As the Israeli propaganda machine excuses its war crimes as just a war against Hamas, this film proves that Israeli policy towards all Palestinians is one of expulsion and humiliation. Walled Off is being released by Watermelon Pictures, a new Palestinian-owned production company, this May. So I sat down with filmmaker Vin Arfuso and collaborator Anwar Hadid to get the story behind it. Thank you guys so much for coming on The Empire Files. It's a huge honor to speak to you both. It's an honor to be here. Thank you for having us. Big fan. Awesome. So your film Walled Off was released last year, a couple months before the Gaza genocide started. So it was pretty crazy timing. Anwar, I wanted to start with you. Um, how did it feel, I mean, as a Palestinian, to see everything that was detailed in the film reach this horrific culmination and then just the inaction by the entire world to do anything to stop Israel. You know, this has been going on. There's stories of this horror, like horrible stories that, you know, you see when, when you go and you meet Palestinians, you hear about these things. So it's like, you know, even making in the editing of the film, Vin and I both knew it was like, this is sometimes it's, it, it, I mean, it's always just, it's a continuation of a new start, you know, in, in a weird way. Cause it's like, it just, an evolution of this thing that has happened so many times, you know? So it's like, you have to pay attention. You have to learn about the entire, the entirety of what has been happening to see like the truths of what is happening right now, you know? So it's like, uh, it's just always evolving and people are always having to kind of be, uh, to continue to learn and just be present with uh, the ongoing uh, kind of catastrophe that has happened, you know, in that, in that land, in my opinion, you know? Yeah, Vin, what did what did you think? Or what do you think? I mean, it's <laughs> six I mean, months it, in. It, it's weird because when I was making it, I was making the film, like editing it, I was so deep in the edit. And I was like telling people, like, you don't understand what's about to happen. It's going to get 10 times worse. It's going to reach all these levels. And at times, doubt, I was like, am I crazy? Like, I'm, you know, it, it's been like this forever, but. I, I somewhat envisioned this happening, maybe not to this extent, but just kind of a, um, a broader regional conflict, which I think is kind of on the brink. I think like in the next year, it'll be worse and it'll, you know, people will forget that the, the thing that kicked this off was Gaza or October 7th. And, you know, we'll be having the conversation bigger uh, with reference to Iran and China and Syria and NATO. Like, I think that that, 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 this is where it'll go, you know? And that's kind of where, when I was making the film, I was making it with that in mind, like the bigger regional thing. Um, so like he said, you know, I mean, there's always something you could, you could check the news every single day. If you follow the right Palestinians, or you could find anything where there's some sort of a catastrophe. As far as I'm concerned, they bomb Gaza every week. It wasn't like, you know, their car, you know, the uh, airstrikes on Gaza, that's nothing new to us, but <clears throat> to reach this level of, um, even publicity, even even the the wrong publicity, like the lies that are being perpetuated, um, I knew that it would make it there in some way, shape, or form. I just didn't know where. I I, I always thought um, Jerusalem, which I think is still kind of be still going to be 
um, an issue with regard to what they've been doing and been, you know, what they've been mobilizing towards with respect to El Aqsa and the Third Temple. And um, it wasn't until about two weeks ago that they even, the news for the first time, I think CBS ran a report where it was like the, you know, red heifers came to Israel on September 8th. And this is um, the, the first step in rebuilding the Third Temple. And for people who don't know what that means, it means that they're going to knock down the Al-Aqsa Mosque and rebuild this Third Temple. Um, and the news, the, the report from CBS even said something to the effect of this changes the narrative. This changes even um, Hamas's intentions because the, the operation was called Al-Aqsa Flood. So for me to see the news almost give like, I don't want to say justify Hamas, but kind of be like, well, we didn't know that this was part of the conversation. This changes our, our mind on their intentions. It's surprising to me because they know exactly what's going on. Right. And they try to keep everything separate. I mean, they keep saying Gazans, they keep saying, you know, the Hamas run Gaza Strip as if it's some separate country, nation entirely. Um, You know, they just try to conflate everything and basically pretend like these are two equal players. And I think that's the most insidious trap of all. Um, It's crazy. And so, yeah, I mean, to bring up Al-Aqsa in the context of the West Bank and and to look at it as in its totality, I think is really crucial. Anwar, you know, we saw Jonathan Glazer at the Oscars. He's, he made a movie about the Holocaust. He's a prominent Mm -hmm. Jewish figure. And he, gave a a really great statement talking about the weaponization of Judaism and how he disagreed with it um, to carry out what's going on right now in his name. We saw this enormous backlash from Hollywood, from celebrities, uh, almost every mainstream media, you know, outlet had some sort of think piece demonizing him. The repression is very strong at this moment, even though it's so obvious what's going on. I mean, you are a famous model. You're, you're in a, you're a musician, you're an artist. Have you received any backlash or, I mean, has your work been hurt at all um, by your stance on this? You know, definitely. I think that there's always a backlash and stuff like that. But, you know, at one point, I I think I've dug my feet into the ground, like most uh, good people have in this, in this type of situation and and at the end of the day it's like you know i I don't want to work with anybody that is uh not allowing me to to speak the truth you know and speak uh you know amplify voices that need to be amplified you know and and going back to you know what uh our brother said during his speech it's like you know the good people of the world like uh follow their in their intuition you know and follow their like the the truth the voice that's within them you know and i think like you know the fear-mongering of uh of all of these different players in the in the game, right? Um, it's just a it's just void of uh, real connection and and um, void of the truth. Because at the end of the day, we all are just humans, right? And we all want uh, connection and peace. And this place, you know, the, what what the, uh, the regime of Israel has done in 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 that land, you know, is is just something that is against human values in general, you know. So. Uh, I think it's something that we can all come together on and, and find uh, a lot of common ground on, you know? I mean, it just must be so surreal to see the fasc- fascism in Israeli society come to such a degree that they're, you know, all these viral pop songs and electronic musicians there, I mean, they love their EDM and they love smashing the shit out of Palestinian shops and looting and pillaging to EDM music. Um, but, you know, there is this particular song that has become viral and it's at the top of the charts in Israel and it actually calls for the death of your sister Bella. Um, And I think this is just a really interesting example of just where Israeli society is at, that that even exists. I mean, how does that make you feel? Like I basically, I grew up around a lot of Jewish people. I grew up around people that, um, you know, that have really great hearts, you know, that don't feel, uh, that aren't aligned with any of this stuff. So to see a a whole entire, um, like, I mean, yeah, a whole, a whole, uh, country of people, you know, using the flag, I mean, the Jewish star, you know, using all these different things and, and, and the, uh, you know, the whole Zionist regime putting in all this like madness into a society that, that doesn't deserve to be, uh, like, brainwashed you know in my opinion you know and if they were given different uh like circumstances and different like you know leadership like you know i'm i'm sure 
there'd be just a better outcome. There'd be a better, uh, there wouldn't be the, these type of songs, you know what I'm saying, that are going around. So everyone is super void of the, the greater problem. Like, you know, everyone's yet tr trying to yell at someone like my sister, who's this one of the sweetest people I know, you know? And um, when there's real horrible shit happening in the world, really, really bad, you know, shit happening there that, that you know, the Israeli people and the, the, the Zionist uh occupation forces regime whatever you want to call it are like perpetuating into into the lives and existence of all of the people you know the people there the the, the jewish israelis there the 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 uh, palestinians christians muslims all these people are being thrown into this 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 war and then it you know it goes on the 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 fight you know goes on to all the it leaks into the rest of the countries around it that's why he's talking about the regional war it's not good for anybody it, it causes all this uh this you know turmoil that can be stopped with the right with the right people you know right people in power right right teachings right you know the school should be teaching peace you know not like uh become part of the army you know <laughs> right i mean that vincent that's what i love about waldorf um is that you know not only does it explain that indoctrination from cradle to grave but i think in the context of the genocide in gaza it's so important to see what is happening in the West Bank, what life is like in the West Bank. And this is kind of a crash course in the West Bank. I mean, it, it details through news clips the daily subjugation and humiliation of Palestinians in the West Bank and the terrorism perpetrated against them by Israeli soldiers and settlers. You know, under the cover of the genocide in Gaza right now, since October 7th, 400 Palestinians have been killed by Israeli fire. 100 of those have been children. In the, in the West Bank. Bank. In the West Bank. So talk about... It doesn't stop. That, right? yeah, it doesn't stop. And it's been exacerbated. And there's there's also several airstrikes that have been carried out. I think I, I read 70, which yeah, we have not seen since the Intifada. Talk about why you chose to do a film about this and what life is like in the West Bank. The West Bank is a place where my peers, if I were able to... to if I were able to be able to depict it in the right way, they could connect with, with the life there, right? Because you have Palestine, like we went to houses that were nicer than ours. We sat with people who spoke better English than us. Majority of Americans, if they even do know about the Palestinians, they see them as a, um, a charity case, right? Like that they're, all their homes are rubble. All, you know, none of them um, speak English, that they're the same exact person in their head as somebody they see in the middle of the night, like give $25 because they're starving. If they don't even know if that they're in Africa or they're in some other country. Whereas what I really wanted to focus on is like, no, these people are you. Like this is the same exact, thing as, uh, you know, as kids you went to high school with, people you work with today, there's, you know, there's, uh, there's, there's all either, walks of life, you know? Yeah, they're either, in, in America, like, you either know them as the victim or the terrorist. Most of the time, it's the terrorist, but they're also not always the victim, right? It's like, even if they are victimized, like, th this is a proud group of people. They're an educated group of people. They're, uh, and they're asking for one simple thing, right? Like, the entire free Palestine message has been distorted even by some pro-Palestinian activists here where the common consensus among most Americans, it means like get rid of Israel. Right. Um, but at the end of the day, it's like, no, no, we're seeking freedom. Somebody else's army in many cases, in most cases is their government. So the West bank is like, you can't find a better example of that. We, when, you know, going from Ramallah to Bethlehem, going from any Palestinian village or uh, city to another, this is where you see the apartheid. This is where you see the checkpoints. This is where you see uh, military outposts everywhere. This is where you see watchtowers. And it's like, this is the thick of it. And you see it not the way you see it on the news with, you know, people starving or bloody or whatever. You see people who drive nice cars who, um, you know, and I don't mean to put into into like materialism, but it's like, that's the way that Americans need to, you know, that's the way that they will understand it. And it's like somebody who you look up to right in front of your face is being treated like a dog. Like th there was instances where a dog was allowed right. to pass through the checkpoint to go on a quicker road than a human being. And again, that's not happening to somebody who doesn't speak English or who's a member of Hamas. That's happened to somebody who has visited the United States more than one time. You know, somebody who has family here. You know, the infrastructure, like the the, the infrastructure of, of the entirety of that land, all the, the, you know, Jerusalem, all the stuff was created by Palestinian people, you know? 
and that's another thing that you know like the the, be- the beauty of each town regardless of if it's uh you know palestinian or israeli now right it's like the, if all these buildings they were built by palestinian people they were built by the people that are indigenous to the land you know right yeah, if, if you know even the slightest like, bit about history if they're not like new construction like it's very clearly an arab home or an arab building like this is this is the these are the materials they use like how do you expect me to believe it's something other than that the zionist uh movement wants to make everyone seem like they've just gave 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 they, they make everything better they've done all this work to like make it and it's like no the people the people palestinian people are some of the most educated people like you know in my opinion yeah i mean they keep saying a people without a land a land without a people and that's what the foundation of zionism zionism was in palestine it's just patently untrue um it's just a land plopped on top of an indigenous land that's predicated on the continuous ethnic cleansing of those people. And, you know, watching Walled Off and struck me when I was in the West Bank and I realized that it finally dawned on me that when I was looking at the Dome of the Rock across, you know, whatever road was maybe a mile away over these this gorgeous terrain and and I just cried, realizing that the vast majority of Palestinians living there cannot go to this incredible holy place of worship, that they are not permitted and that's what Waldorf talks about. I mean, the fact that you can live in Ramallah, you can live in uh, Nabi Saleh like uh, um, like Ahad Tamimi and not ever be able to go to the beach, which is 15 miles away, 15 minutes away, rather. Most kids in and the West Bank haven't even, they have never even seen the sea. And it's right there. It's, it's literally right there, but they've never even seen it because of the wall and because of whatever else. And aside from, you know, the, the physical wall, there's the, you know, the political and metaphorical wall of, even if that wall wasn't there, you're not allowed. You have this type of ID. You exactly. are not, the you're separation not allowed here. You know the I mean? there's, a, there's a distinct separation. It's like, and that's why it's funny when, you know, we're in America, right? We have, we all have social media. You see somebody like Michael Rappaport, Bill Maher, like their distortion of the facts it's like, it's, it's funny. It's actually funny because you're, they're so wrong. Um, and Anwar and I were talking about this before. Like there's some people who I know it's like, all right, well, that's, that's the state department. Like that woman or, you know, that lady Noah Tishby, like she knows what she's lying about. Right. She's a very smart intellectual woman. And she says she's not paid by the Israeli government. Sure. Whatever. But you know, she's, she, her talking points are so in line with every single Israeli politician from the beginning and from the creation of Zionism. Then you have an idiot like Michael Rapport, who believes it and, you know, pa- like starts, you know, parroting these talking points with this confidence because of this person who's tricking them. She's no dummy. She knows what she's lying about. Everybody after that is an idiot for believing it. You know, you're not doing your research. You're letting some person on Instagram tell you the history of one of the biggest regional conflicts ever, probably, you know, in, in our lifetime, the biggest one. So it's like, Oh, you know, well, Michael you know, Rapoport is out there in West Jerusalem and he's like, where's the apartheid? It's like, yeah, oh my dude, God. That's, that's, yeah, you're literally answering your own you're, question, you're, you fucking idiot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. I'm like, yo, you obviously haven't talked to one person that you should talk to. Not <laughs> one. Because I'm like, yo, there's, a, I'm like, yo, if you, I, you can so easily, you can, you can find the truth so easily if you want to, bro. It's just actually stupid. That's like, and, and that's what we were laughing about earlier. It's like it's painful to see that because you know, it's 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 sad. It's literally it make it actually makes us both me and Vin literally sad because you know you look at a guy like Michael Rappaport and just anyone. I, and I I really do feel I'm like yo, this person has you know he's funny. He has a good like there's a good heart inside of this person. He's just uneducated about the truth and is blindly supporting this thing because of his like. uh creed and whatever you want to call it because of just like you know him being maybe he's being bullied you know maybe he's being bullied into 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 like into saying such stupid shit but in the reality is that he at one point you know i believe that everyone will wake up and realize you know there's this is a human this is a talk of humanity this is real shit you can you can like uh pretend that there's not apartheid all you want just to make a point but if you really look you really see all the all the if you go to the museums right the there's there's museums in in bethlehem that show you the different forms of uh apartheid and and you know just horrible sh- stuff that has been 
like perpetuated on our people, right? There's there's history. We have we have like museums about it. There's it's 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 happened so much, you know. So it's like just learn, really learn from the people you need to learn from, you know. I, I would else, even make the argument that, that there's there's an instance of apartheid that the Israeli government inflicts on its own people. So like they they tell Israelis you're not allowed to go into these areas in the West Bank because of the color of your skin. But in their head, it's well they're protecting us. It's like, you know, they're, they're pulling on those trauma strings. It's like, they're not limiting me. They're not limiting my movement. They're protecting me because there's animals inside of there. And then most of the time when you find out, I mean, I'm sure, I think you've, you might've interviewed Miko or I don't know, but Miko, like there's, there's so many people like Miko Pellet and like Miko were like, my whole world changed when I just said, fuck it. And I went in and I met these people and I heard their experiences. So it's like, that's the, that's the reason they're not allowed in there. It's not that was the first they're... thing we ever that the first thing an Israeli person ever said to me and Vin was when we asked to go to Jericho. We were just going to Jericho to stay with our friend's uncle. Okay, the 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 taxi driver said to us when we were going to Jericho. We said we're going to go to Jericho. He goes to us. That is where the animals live. He, and he, Are you sure you want to go there? And we're light, and so he didn't think that you know we're like these pro Palestinian, half Palestinians, both of us. He was like. Jericho like he was like you, you that's where the animals live we were like what and Whoa. and this guy to his point of like what he kind of said about uh rapport about having this guy seemed like a nice guy he I, I actually in my mind believe that he is a nice guy with a big heart but he knows nothing other than what's been fed to him and then it became an issue where he got so nervous he called the cops he thought he was going to get in trouble for bringing us there we were driving and all of a sudden like he just pulled up on the side of the road and then all these cars started coming i'm like this motherfucker dude he just right we're fucked it's over it's a real no it's just a real representation of how ingrained the, i mean how how connected the society is to the to like the nat like the nationalism the the police force the government all these different things like it's so like they have hooks on every single person living in this place like it's all been made to, to be this way like the way that they split palestinian people uh you know um by physical walls right checkpoints all these things but they get they, but they have different ids it's to separate it's to separate the strength that we have in unity you know and, and and not just palestinians humans like if if all humans if the walls were broken down and there was a real reality and both of these places could have the same rules and the same what's about we, you know how many people we humans live together freely in like all different types of races, religions, all these type, type different types of things in 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 uh, in places that it, that allows you know. Well, but I, in, in an apartheid regime, it just doesn't allow for anybody to be free, you know, because it's like in, it's it's structured in there to to cause this fear mongering amongst all the people, you know. Well, in walled <laughs> off, I think it, it it perfectly encapsulates what you're saying, Anwar and Vin, because. A bunch of Israeli youth watch the film Five Broken Cameras, and you can see that indoctrination break down real time, where afterward they're just like, I see like myself in that child. What? How do I change this? What do I do? It's like, you're totally right. I mean, the forced separation, it's articulated in the fact that um, even the hotel that the film centers around, which is the Waldorf Hotel by artist Banksy, Israelis are banned from going there. And when you go into the West Bank, there's those huge red signs that just says like, do not enter at your own risk. Like this is very dangerous for you. I mean, it, it does go Most both ways. Most of them say you're banned by Israeli law. It's not even like enter right. at your own risk. It's like you are not allowed. And that's kind of the point I was trying to make before of like, you know, people say like, what apartheid? There's a, this is an Arab doctor in Northern Israel. It's like, okay, I, I'm aware that that exists, but the apartheid within the West Bank, here's all the reasons why. Palestinians are not allowed to drive on this road, right? Like this road is specifically de get dedicated to this. Here's the ID for this person. They have to disclose whether they're Muslim, Christian, live in the West Bank. But also like there's an instance of apartheid even on the Israeli society that they don't realize, that they think it's for their own protection, majority of them, um, in terms of you are not allowed to enter this area. Like it is against the law. It's in the law. So they'd have to break the law to go to that hotel. Which is right, right, you know, like a mile away from their house. Right. And what will happen if they go there? They'll see Palestinian kids, right? I mean, this is why the dehumanization They'll works. They'll be offered free food. They'll be like, right. they're yeah. just so the most You're welcoming, dead. beautiful culture ever. Come on in. Like, I remember going to one Palestinian shop and, I, and he was just like, I love Americans. Like, come, come in here. And it's just like, I, I mean, it, it's literally, they do not want them to see Palestinians as human. And that's why yeah. they don't want them to go there. That's why in the film, that one kid, when uh, like um, 
when I was cutting back and forth in the one, the part where um, I was highlighting the way that the media portrays like Palestinians, um, I simply just, just asked him like, what do you think about America? And he was the kid who was cooking. He was like a kid, uh, like a, a, a butcher slash food shop. And he was like, I love America. Like everything in America is the best. Like when I went there, I walked down, I was like, what the fuck? Like, this is not what I thought. Like I, I found myself as a pro Palestinian and a Palestinian. I'm an, like, I'm not, I'm not a pal. I'm an ignorant American at the end of the day, even with, with my intentions being as good as they are and doing all this research and keeping up. I was like, I don't know a fucking thing. Like I'm an idiot. No, literally the people there know more than the people there know more of the truth. <laughs> they have, they know their reasons why they don't uh, like appreciate or like America for what they have done in the, in the Middle East. Right. Just like any smart person, whatever. Same thing with, with, it's like these people are really intelligent. They really are intelligent. They, yeah, they, Americans they know. are stupid. Like we're we're stupid. We're, we're, that was our the whole joke. It's like literally like the, we met kids, fifteen year old kids that were sm- they spoke times, English better than times us. smarter than me and Vin, literally. And that was the that was the that the was point the point of highlighting like, that. What? Yeah, we wanted yeah, to highlight of- that. We're like yo, you like everyone wants to have opinions. Like in America, we are so void. We're so lost from the truth, from having critical thinking to having all these different things. Like you can, you can have both people, people love America and also are critical of it. And uh, you know what I'm saying? And you're allowed to be able to do that. You know, you're allowed to be, you should be allowed to be able to kind of have those uh, different thoughts, you know? You know, that's how indoctrination works. That's how a society becomes this way is because you don't see the other side as human because you never interact with them. Um, I want to talk about also the fact that, you know, Walled Off was an incredibly interesting documentary because it's really news clips speaking for themselves. There's no editorializing, barely any, really. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think this really just, you know, as I was watching it, it kind of struck me like the fact that so many people can feign ignorance about this conflict when it's one of the most well-documented occupations and human rights crimes in the last hundred years. It's like, how is that possible that so many people remain so ignorant to it, especially in the countries that are perpetrating it, right? In Europe and especially the United States. I just saw a poll that was shocking that said half of Americans don't know whether more Israelis have died than Palestinians in the conflict. And it's just like, what an indictment of just our corporate media that is, that that's how ignorant we are. But it's just like, this is so well documented. I mean, as the news clips speak for themselves, well, that's the thing. And I, I wanted to make it like that because initially a lot of the people who were kind of, we were getting notes from or whatever, just kind of like, we need more of you guys, right? Like we need more of your journey. It's like, no, it's not about us. Right. And the number one thing I wanted to do was like, show, don't tell. So by way of the news clips, it's also, aside from that, it's like, you see news from the sixties, you see news from the forties, you see news from 2005, you see news from like it, it, puts a stamp on the, when we say for 70 years, even the news who has been biased from its inception, every once in a while will throw us a bone and be like, yeah, they murdered that child. They, 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 they like literally a, a grown man with a sniper rifle shot that child. And if you're, if you're not able to see that and then see that there might be some sort of reaction or that there's something wrong there or that anything that you've learned about Israel, then it's like, I don't know what to tell you. Um, and for that reason is, is kind of why I, I, I cut it like that. And I didn't want to put any narration or make it about us. Also, too, it's like our generation, we're, we all have ADD. You know, in cutting it the way that I did is people were like, because it's mirrored to the thing that sucks us in every day of our lives, our cell phone. It's kind of just this like rapid information onto the next. Bright colors, rapid information onto the next. The fact that, you know, uh, I think that the reason why the world is so you know, quiet and it's taking kind of so long for people to kind of uh, like understand this because there's so many other, you know, people were talk- are talking about, you know, how Palestine, you know, th- what's happening there, Gaza is freeing us, you know, freeing the world, right? Of these, of the- and, and it's bringing up so much like uh, to the surface, right? And, you know, I think that, you know, the, 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 the you know, colonialism, just the, you know, European uh, kind of like terror onto you know africa and the middle east throughout throughout and america you know and america too but um all this stuff is you know com- coming coming to the surface it's like you know we the the west and in europe 
uh, feeds off of the destruction and in these places that, you know, if they were left alone, they would, they would be uh, able to, you know, survive and flourish, you know? So it's like, there's a lot to be done, you know? Gaza and, and, and Palestine is, is just the catalyst, you know, the catalyst for all this stuff that, you know, and you see it now, it's like, you know, there's many African countries, you know, telling France to get out, telling whoever to get out after all these years, because it's like, you know, it's, I think the world, I think our generation, I think the, the new, the new generations are just, they don't, you know, no one wants to see this stuff that we've know that we know is wrong. You know, it's like, there is ways to, to move forward. There is ways for, uh, for us to survive and, 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 you know, work together and have real like, uh, companionship countries, different countries, you know, people could work together, fair trade, things like that. You know, it's like, we don't need to be rinsing, uh, our earth and, and destroying, you know, whole economies and, uh, ways of life and people indigenous peoples uh you know uh right to self-determination and and prosper like you know to be able to prosper you know and and i think that's why because there's just a lot of there's a lot of shit bubbling up to the surface i just feel like um you know as we start to, as people you know in different countries you know the, start to wake up to it's like yo holy shit my look what look what you know Look what we're doing over here. Look what we're doing over here. It's like there's there's a lot to be done. People need to wake up in general and be like, uh, you know, we're just work beyond blessed, and we have so many resources and, and and so much stuff in 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 this world. You know that we need to uh, keep in, in mind that there's people that that uh, get thrown under the bus for us to have uh, like these these things. You know, Gaza has been a teaching moment. I think for a lot of people, a learning moment for a lot of people to take stock about how the world actually works and how power dynamics have subjugated tens of millions of people under the boot of empire and its appendages, which is, you know, most notably Israel. It was particularly bone chilling, you know, even myself who studied this for the last 15 years, it was still really bone chilling to see these old clips, um, not just the Oslo stuff, which was just, just a whole other kind of depressing montage of just how far we've strayed uh, post-Oslo and how just fake uh, the entire peace process has been. But to see Benjamin Netanyahu from 1978 talking about how there sh never should be a Palestinian state, proudly declaring it in this big speech. And here we are almost 50 years later, and this man this criminal is overseeing the genocide. And we have our leaders in the United States placating the American public. Oh no, well, there should be a two-state solution. And you have, like you said, Noah Tishbe. I mean, all of these people that Israel puts out there on the mainstream media to, to talk to us because Americans are the ones who subsidize all of this. It's smart. The way they do it is brilliant. It's crazy. It and it's like, I mean, the gaslighting, the gaslighting to go back and be reminded that no, these people never would have allowed a Palestinian state. And, and you just see Benjamin Netanyahu from that time. And then you fast forward to today. I mean, just that level of gaslighting is just so crazy to me. It's like at the end of the day, the, the real truth is, listen, if anybody wants to come live on Palestinian land, you need to respect the Palestinian people and you need to respect the, the, their right to self-determination. That's the actual great truth, you know, of all these things, even in, even in, you know, in, uh, in Africa and the Congo, in, di in different countries all over the world, there's, there's real, you know, uh, colonization happening, real, like, you know, people coming in and not respecting the, the indigenous people. I opened mm -hmm. up the film with a quote from Haim Wiseman, where he said, um, Zionist colonization can't proceed without something to the effect of without the indigenous population behind an iron wall, right? Um, and more importantly, is like this. This is within this century, right? That was, I think, in the twenties or thirties, whenever he said that it was kind of it was before the state of Israel was created. But my point in, in saying that is, you have somebody like Bill Maher who's like <laughs> colonization. I mean, <laughs> what do you mean talking colonization? What is it? You're talking about the, that's Britain in the 1600s. It's like you know, dickhead, like. They fucking said it. They like it's in it's in the it's in the blueprint. Like the guy, the first president of the state of Israel, Heimlich, he said Zionist colonization. Like I'm not the one who said it. They said it. 
But you're making it like, oh, it's just this weird, wacky, liberal thing where like all these young millennials like to talk about colonization. And then he gets an applause. And when people hear an applause, they think that means that this guy is right. So it's like, it's just so distorted. And it's, it's really important to understand, like, we need to know who knows what they're talking about before even having the conversation. And every podcast we've done or any interview, I've always said, like, we're not the arbiter of truth. We're not the arbiter. We're not like, you know, the the the, the kings of Palestine. Like, we know everything. We don't. We're, we're very honest about not knowing a lot. We went there and learned. But what I can tell you I know for a fact is that they're fucking lying. And they've been lying. Because like you just said, like, you have Netanyahu in 78 as an American guy in Boston being like, There'll be no Palestinian state ever. And then, like, we have to sit here and think about, like, I have to hear AOC say something about a two-state solution. Like, I don't care. It's all fake. Like, you're all actors. Like, this is, like, it's cl- if you're not bringing that up, why are you even speaking? Like, you, do, do you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't, none of it makes any sense. Like, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Right, especially, I mean, Bill Maher is, is a so-called liberal. I oh, mean, the liberal a- Zionism yeah. is just absolutely bizarre. Because, so yeah. embarrassing. Like, I have way more respect for, like, the settlers, like, the staunch Zionists <laughs> than, like, a liberal Zionist. <laughs> right. I mean, Bill, Bill Maher's whole rant about colonization is just like, oh, well, let's look at how Arabs colonized this land 600 years ago. It's like, or why don't we look at what's happening right now, which is bloody conquest. Yeah, right it's like, right, that was faces. bad. You want me to, <laughs> like, I don't have a time machine, so what do you want me to do about that? I mean, you know, okay, this is, the, it brings me to this point, which is, um, the anti-Semitism charge. And I think that's put a lot of well-intentioned people on the defense for so long because, you know, I think a lot of pro-Palestine activists are anti-racists, anti-bigots, um, certainly care about the plight of Jewish people. And so it's put a lot of people on the defense for the last several decades saying, no, 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 we're not anti-Semitic, but Israel's doing this or that. I don't think it's working anymore um, because of how many Jewish activists are on the front lines of actions here in the United States and elsewhere. Thank God. Thank God, yeah. And but but even so, I mean, showing again the disconnect between even people like AOC and Bernie Sanders, who's a proud liberal Zionist, the UN Special Rapporteur um, Francesca Albanese, who's an international human rights lawyer, just published this report on the heels of many other international bodies saying that this is genocide. She also said that the Israel has met the UN Commission's threshold of committing genocide. So that's a big deal. Then you have Ned Price, who used to be a State Department spokesperson. Now he's a representative to the United Nations. He was asked about this at a recent press conference, and he just kind of just laughed it off, essentially, as just saying, well, um, that UN investigator is just anti-Semitic and dismissed the report. I mean, I guess my question is, what is your perspective on the fact that this charge has been used for so long to tamp down on criticism of Israel. And are you surprised, given how much you guys did a deep dive in just the clips, like the rhetoric that goes back 75 years, how this has always been explicitly laid bare, the intent for apartheid, the intent for ethnic cleansing, the intent for genocide. And it's just this topsy-turvy reality where I, I, I don't think it's working anymore, but like it, it has for so long. And that's that's the travesty here. So- when it, when it comes to somebody at the level of Ned Price, I think that where him brushing it off as anti-Semitic, like I know he knows it's not, but then he the, the lobbyists, you know, you know, are going to wreck him. So like that's what that is. Like he's just protecting himself and keeping his job, right? But people who believe it and why I think everything has to do with anti-Semitism, like if you trek back, like have you ever heard some of the Theodore Herzl's quotes from his diary? Like Theodore Herzl, the, the founder of Zionism, right, said the solution to the Jewish problem is conversion to Christianity. Anybody who hears that thinks Hitler said it. But no, it's the guy who's his pictures in every single classroom in Israel. He also said um, things like an excellent idea enters my mind to attract outright anti-Semites and make them the destroyers of Jewish wealth. So it's like, wait, this is, this is the guy who created Zionism, who what I'm told is like Zionism is the thing that is, is keeping Jews alive, right? Where at, when you really start to dive into it, it's like, wait a second, it kind of seems like it's a trap on them. And the people who, you know, enforce this trap and keep it going are the real anti-Semites. Like, I don't think that Lindsey Graham has real... Uh, you know, really nice things to say about Jews when it when he's when he's at his dinner table, or like somebody like um, 
you know, John McCain. Like these are like Protestant Christians who think Jews go to hell. And that speaks to a way bigger point of, you know, Christian Zionism preceding Jewish Zionism by 400 years. Uh, you know, this is an ideology that actually came out of Britain from British elites who were like, we got to get these fucking people out of Europe. Um, let's kill two birds with one stone and make it like, you know, we'll get them out, um, but also colonize the Middle East. Like they wanted the, the Ottomans out and it's like, now they're out. How do we do this thing? Like, let's run with this Zionism thing. And it's, it's theirs. Like the people who signed off on creating the state of Israel, who get all this praise, like a couple of weeks before signed off that they're not allowed in this country. So it's like the anti-Semites are the ones who really control Israel. Uh, and that's why the charge is so heavy. It's like, wait, that's anti-Semitic. It's to protect themselves. It's not really to, to put a stain on somebody else. It's to make sure you don't realize that the guy who's doing the press conference is an anti-Semite. Anwar? No, no, just crazy. And then I'm also thinking, what just came to me is just like, you know, and, you know, there's all this information about, you know, even... Palestinian people, if you if if I if we draw blood out of our out of our blood right now, you know, and we and we do the test, I have books on my blood, whatever, you know, my blood is traced back. The Palestinian people's blood is traced traced back to the first Semitic people, like you know, the first people before any of these religions even were existed. Palestine in general is a place of uh, like you know constant, you know, throughout thousands of years mixture you know like people coming through that land you know from from africa and then from you know these places i want uh you know people to come together and have real respect for each other and respect for you know the fact that we all did come from the same seed right and even if you look back in all this shit it's like you know weaponizing the separation of people on creeds and all this different shit to fight against each other is just not the way you know waldorf was released last year i know that you guys went to the west bank together uh, a couple of years prior, right before COVID. What were some of the obstacles that you guys faced in making the film? And I guess some of the most surprising things that you learned throughout the production of it. it it's funny because like, we didn't lead with this and everyone's like, I don't know why you, that's not the first thing in the film. Like I had to shoot majority of the film on my iPhone. When we landed, they had withheld my cameras at the airport. But then, it, you know, if I do that, then it kind of speaks to like, you know, Anwar and I are the victim. Like, we're not. Like, all right, we may do. But right away, there was an issue. Right away. Like, and the reason that they do that, they're like, oh, something happened with your bags. Just give us the address of where you're staying and we'll send it to you. And that's why. It's like, they want to know where you're staying. Um, it's because you're not supposed to stay in the West Bank. And if we tell them we're staying in the West Bank, then we'll be in an interrogation room for, you know, 20 hours. And it's like, so right away, we had to make do with that. And then when we did get, when I did get my equipment back, it was like, we got one bag and they took, the batteries out of, you know, one and I was missing two lenses. So it made it almost impossible to shoot it. Like I had one camera by the end of it, but a majority of the film, like it shot on my iPhone, like my iPhone 13 or 14, whatever I had in 2019. So like right away, that was something. And, uh, you know, what he told the story before in 2019, it took us forever to get to Jericho. And it's like, you know how big it's a, t it's small, it's, it's smaller than Jersey, right? Or the same exact size. Like, it took us, what, 10 hours to get down there just because the, the cab driver was like, no, that's where the animals live. We're like, okay, whatever. That's your opinion. We have to go there. Okay. And then he got nervous and called the police. So it's like- They it, drove us behind the police car, you know? The police then <laughs> interrogated us, you know, in there. Then, then, he, then he wouldn't even drop us. Remember, he wouldn't even drop us at the place he, dro he, yeah, like, we he had drove to us to this somebody, other- like, The common denominator is the occupation. Like there's, there's an army that's controlling everything. It's not like, you know, the police, it's not even just like the police. It's like, no, this is an army. Like they're, they're coming up to you, me as an American with, you know, with a P90, yeah, by like the way, putting guns in our face, a gun we, uh, made like, for close range death. We basically. were standing, we were standing outside of El Oxen. I just was like, kind of standing there walking around, like do fist my backpack and soldiers ran up to me with a gun stuck in my face. It was like, open your bag. And I'm like, all right. The minute I pulled out my, you know, U.S. passport, the tone changed significantly, but it's like, what do they go through? I'm just, I'm walking around here as a, as a, let's just say I was from Italy and I was just going to see, you know, where Christ was born. I'm there to spend money. Like that's how you treat people. It goes far beyond like there's issues. Like you, you name it. There's issues. <laughs> like, yeah, so yeah. what did they, what did they do when they interrogated you before you actually got into Jericho? Because I 
obviously saw your name, Anwar, and they, you know, they you know. guys don't, you guys they knew. Well, 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 like even from the, even from the beginning of when we got there, you know, we all bought our, our tickets separately. They had put all of our names together, even though we, we had booked yeah, like our we, we, separately. Yeah, like flying from different places and they had us. They knew, they knew the, the group of friends that we were traveling with just from th their intelligence, you know? That's and really so when disturbing. I plugged in my name. They put all of our, you know, all of our friends, and they have no reason to. Like the only way that they would know that we're together is through some sort of. And that's why, like, when it comes to October seventh, like, you know, call me a conspiracy theorist, but it's like they were able to figure that out. You didn't know what was about to happen. Like, there's you invented surveillance. It's right. Like, yeah. I keep reading every day. I read more stories about how Israeli spyware is on your phone. How Israeli surveillance is working with the LAPD. It's just like, good God. I mean. It's kind of, yeah, it's very far reaching. And um, that is really disturbing, though, that they knew before you guys even got there. And um, so, what, so what even, happened? Even, so even, the, even police, the people, even the yeah. people at the airport were, were aware, like the, like the, the service of LA, like the service uh, men and women. Well, that was that the first drugs. mistake. That was the first mistake. And we have to admit that we flew El Al the first time, which is like Mossad <laughs> Airlines. So, like, <laughs> yeah, but we that was our bad. You, but that we was did our it. Bad. Yo. What, you know? No, but they held us. Bad. They interrogated yeah. us. So when we flew the second time, I had a cast. I like I had I had my my hand was broken. I had a cast, and they they like stripped us down, whatever. And they were like, "Listen, like if the thing goes off, beep, like the whatever the wand, um, you're not going to be able to fly." I was like, "Why?" Because we can't, you know, open up. I was like, "Don't worry, I'll cut it off right now and show you." <laughs> then when I get there, I'll get a new. But like that's how. And we were just they didn't let us fly. We were flying first class. They didn't let us fly with anything that we had in our oh my God, no electronics they took all they didn't let us bring chargers on the plane no I chargers remember. no laptops and no, we saw no a broke next chargers. door with the laptop charger computer this charger this guy next door was charging his tesla i think like, i'm not <laughs> yeah. even kidding like he had every cord you could think of and i'm just sitting there like i can't even fucking charge my phone <laughs> so funny so funny i was about to ask bro i was like yo could i use your charger brother because i because i i couldn't bring any me and Ben here. So it's like you you ask us like were there any challenges? It's like before we even left New York City, I'm like, oh fuck, like it's not even gonna happen, you know? I mean, they, was, I'm surprised they even let you in the country, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, me too. I mean, I don't know about now. Like, I think so though. Like, I you know, my my parents are like, you're never going back. I'm like, I'm not that fucking important. No one even saw the movie. All right. Like, you know, it's it's all good. There's people who you know, challenge the state of Israel far greater than I ever have who go in and out. And, you know, it's like it would make my point if I went there and something bad happened. Actually, because they knew who he was the first time we flew, they treated us like awesome. Remember the first time we went, we landed. They took us off the plane. It was it was easier customs than when I went to Aruba. Like we got <laughs> off the plane. They stamped our passport. Smiles yeah. gave us tea, cookies. But see, that's the small. Like, like, please that. think that we're good. <laughs> exactly. No, no, we have that, 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 that was like, the vibe. That was the vibe. The I mean, they, they still they give you lays and stuff. stuff. Like, I remember yeah. we, were, we were in that we were in that little like back room for uh, for quite a while. But they were doing their best to uh, to you know to overly like you know. I saw it like when, when, when the cops, when we were when we were on our way to Jericho the first time, and the police showed up, and then a couple arms. Like I saw the same thing I see in America, right? In terms of the society, there was let's let's call it four or five soldiers. You had the douchebag who's on steroids who thinks he's a tough guy. Then you had like a you know there was like two or three girls. Like I could tell, I could see in their eyes that like they're a product of their environment. What they do with with that is is up to them. Like there's different instances. Like there are police officers who are good people, right? But they work for, you know, a system that by and large, you know, you could end up in a bad spot and do something where you take the life of somebody who didn't need to die. And then you have people who enjoy that. Like people are like, no, I have this job for that reason. Like that's, that's the case there too. It was like, you know, I, I we saw young women soldiers who I knew wanted us to see them in a positive light. We obviously didn't, you know, but I could tell that it's not, you know, it's not, it wasn't their intention to scare us. They wanted us to think that, no, we're, we're this is a good place. We're good people. Um, and that's why it's like the occupation is like, th there's long-term victims of even the people who are on their side. Right. You know? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I would say a hundred percent of governments are corrupt, right? And all religions at the end of the day, if you really track down are metaphors in, in some which way, and they're all peace. Like if you could find the peace in all religions, like if you intertwine a government with religion, 
it's bound, you're bound to corrupt that religion. Like, you know, if you, if you wanted to create anti-Semitism, I think the best idea would be to create a country, put the Star of David on the forefront of the flag, and then act in the most aggressive manner where the whole world, except for like the United States and Britain, sees it. And in those two other countries, you're not, you're not allowed to talk about it because it's anti-Semitic. So then, you know, the consensus is, oh, the Jews run the world and they're violent people. Like, that's not the case at all. Um, I want to end this by talking about where we're at. I mean, we talked a little bit about generationally how people are completely seeing the truth with their own eyes. They're not believing U.S. corporate media anymore. They're, they're not listening to the politicians who have this bipartisan foreign policy consensus that just says Israel can do no wrong, even in the midst of a genocide. Um, Anwar, I know that you know you were out in the streets during Sheikh Jarrah in 2021 in L.A. I remember seeing you out there. It, it's incredible to see millions of people in this country taking to the streets consistently and not just with protests, interrupting these politicians, interrupting the lobbyists, making it untenable for anyone to go out in public who's supporting this genocide. Um, are there any words that you want to say about just where we're at, where you see things going um, with, you know, even though there's horrific things going on, I feel like things are changing in terms of the consciousness. I like to think in a way of, um, you know, all of the people and the energy that like um, have, you know, used their life force and their and their and their time to like, you know, move this thing forward. It's never like uh, I hope to God that it's not for a waste, you know, and it's not for no reason. And I just believe in like the I believe that we, we should we have to have that hope. We have to have that that like that hope. Uh, that things change and I see it, you know, I do see, I think we all see it in, in, in the just recent events of what's happening. You know, I've never felt more support on, on Instagram. I've never seen more people, uh, like taking a real stand and, 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 you know, joining the movement, joining like a movement that has felt very lonely for, for Palestinians, I think, uh, it, for, for many years, you know, and, and the support of the West and the support of the people all over the world that the real people is 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 what we need you know and and we need to continue to do that and just and realize that you know um the the revolution has already begun just you know and it's and it's been happening for years you know so it's like it, it's 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 a constant fluid movement so everybody needs to tap in and you know uh do their best to to be of support be of service during the 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 life the lives that we have during like the uh while we're all breathing, you know, it's like, this is part of uh, the purpose of being a human. You know, it's not just, uh, it's not just for Palestinians and, 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 uh, you know, just the people of Gaza, but this is a perfect uh, example and a place that we can all come together on, on something that is, is true and the truth. And, and then we hope to expand this shift to the rest of the world. Cause it's like, no one deserves to live in this type of stuff. No, there's so much problems that we need to tap into and we need humanity to, to lock in to do it you know it's like uh yeah that's just what it is that's how i feel so i think uh keep going you gotta stay on track and, and continue to teach you know people around us and teach our children you know the truth so well said vin yeah i, I to me like the little bit of the cynic in me it's like a double-edged sword right because i do like seeing i've never seen numbers of pro-Palestinian rallies like that in my entire life. Like that one, there's images in my head, like that London bridge, like there's so, you know, it looked like the whole world was out for Palestine. So like in that regard, it's, it's the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. But there is the flip side, right? Where now you have the people that we want to convince fervently against it because now they see it as Antifa. They see it as like, you know, a part of the liberal lunacy that was 2016 to 2020. You know, there was no, there was a lack of nuance like the same thing that's happening now is kind of what happened from 2016 to 2020, where it's like you can criticize Donald Trump, you can hate Trump, but it's like you need there needs to be nuance and context within the conversation. And like most pro-Palestinian uh, people, if they're just kind of hopping on board now, they lack that a little bit where it's like the people that we need to convince just goes, oh, well, that's that's Rashida Tlaib. That's AOC. That's the thing I already don't like. And, you know, that's why when you come from a place where it's like, for me, as a it's like, no disrespect 
to them, it's like, I don't care about Rashida Tlaib or AOC. Like, they live in America. I'm not talking about them or this, um, you know, identity politics. It can't fall into, like, it's you're either on this side, which is, you know, the side of the rapists and the murderers and the Hamas, or you're on that side. And it's like, it's following October 7th, it's become very black and white. And there's absolutely, you know, on the, on the main uh, conversation, like the bigger conversation, the there's, big there's, there's, a, there's a lack of nuance where it, end, it, it could end up hurting us. But at the end of the day, for, you know, the tide has been turning, right? Like I knew that I, I remember in 2014 or 15 watching the Oslo Diaries and seeing the, and this was on HBO. And the way it ended, it was like, it made Netanyahu look bad. And I was like, I was, I remember crying, like thinking like, holy shit, that it's the, the times are changing. Like I can make a film about this. Like I'm, I saw one on TV for the first time that wasn't, you know, you know, Israel is like us and it's, you know, nine 11 is what happens to them every day. It was like, no, no, no. Here's a really, really, really great, uh, production that didn't highlight everything, but at least it was 10% of the truth. And when that happens, there is, you know, a bucket gets kicked forward where it grows and it grows. You just, you know, people just need to be educated on it and know what they're saying so that they're not set up by somebody like Charlie Kirk. You know, you see these videos of, you know, Christian conservatives going on college campuses, owning libs. And it's like, once you see that, like the average American who thinks there was a lot of lunacy from 2016 to 2020, they're going to associate Palestine with whatever response that kid has to Charlie Kirk. You know what I mean? Like, and who doesn't know the facts? Like there's a, there's a video that went viral. It was like the best video on Palestine, Israel. And the kid just didn't know what he was talking about. Charlie Kirk's like, well, what do you mean? There's no uh, right to movement in the West Bank. He's like, I go there all the time. And the kid's just like, uh, uh, and it has like millions and millions and millions of views. So it's like, come correctly. You need to know what's going on. Um, the, the plight of the Palestinian people have nothing to do with that situation, but somehow it's, it becomes synonymous with it. And like, that's kind of my bigger fear with the more exposure it gets, that sentiment also grows. So it's like, just try your best to educate yourself. Say you don't, you know, understand that you need to learn more. Even on War and I, like there's things we don't know still to this day. You know, we're very lucky, made a film. We're talking to Abby Martin. It's awesome. But like, I can't sit here and be like, this is what it is, but I can tell you what it's not, you know? Right, right. I think that's, that's well said too. It's like, Look, I mean, all these tr- these rhetorical traps that they want us to fall into. Oh, does so you're saying Israel doesn't have the right to exist? It's like, no, we're just saying an apartheid state and a military occupation does not have the right to exist. Everyone yeah, exactly. deserves dignity, freedom of mobility, and human rights. And that's what we're all fighting for. And I, I, I do think, Anwar, that humanity will win. I think that people are waking up. I think the collective consciousness is spiraling and, you know, the world knows. The world can see it. It's just the U.S. Yeah. and it's Americans. And unfortunately, in a lot of instances, when our country is committing the greatest acts of evil, we're the last ones to really realize that. Um, but you guys, Walled Off is such a crucial tool. Congratulations on this film. It's an amazing time capsule. It's so crucial to understand the context of what we're seeing unfold in Gaza I hope everyone watching this watches Walled Off. Thank you so much, Vin, Anwar. Really appreciate you guys coming on. And I really appreciate your time and everything that you guys do. It's our pleasure. It's so great to be here. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having us.